Hi everyone, check it out. All done, fully functional, almost ready to go. And you're probably going, uh, wait a minute here. <laughs> yeah, I did finish it, but let me show you how I did it. Uh, let me run the intro and I'll be right back. Kits I think are the way to go because you don't have that cookie cut. Actually, fiberglassing, painting, uh, as you roll it forward, just kind of press it like this. As far as a brick bed for a leading edge. One last thing on tip blocks is that you want to cut outside the line. Say Cougar Build Part 8, the Bombers. We are on step 29 in the manual. Come the back. Manual. This is part 9 of the Sig Cougar Build. This is a Sig Cobra. It's the 20 size version. Well, you've seen the completed project, and uh, now I'm going to show you how I went about doing it. I'd like to uh, emphasize that there is no right or wrong way to do this. It is more of the hard way or the easy way. Um, but it comes down to whatever way you want to do it that makes it easier for you to be accurate, or as close to accurate as you can be. I have the nose wheel mounted, has uh, Allen screws in there holding it down. And what I did is I took a little ruler and measured out the width of the tire and just, you know, not really measured it, but drew lines on the inside using the ruler against the tire and marked lines straight down. And that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to take a Dremel tool with a sanding drum. Just like this. this is a variable speed fairly old but reliable and I'm gonna start by just grinding this down and test fitting the tire and grinding it down fitting the tire back and forth back and forth until the tire is seated as far as it can go and when I have to make um, adjustments like for the what for the width of the wire on the side then I'll slowly carve that back. Uh, it's not a hard thing to do. It's just a thing of patience. So once you do that, your wheel will drop straight down inside. And all the reinforcing I did up front for the former should be good. If not, then I'm going to have to figure something out. And after that, figure out the controls, how I'm going to run the cables and uh, the push rod for the retract itself, the, and the, the cable for the steering, that's going to be the easy part. And there's some things you got to know about how to set up the steering so it works properly and not hang up. So with that being said, I'm going to get out my Dremel tool. I'll change the angle a little bit so you can see a little better and I'll start grinding on it and uh, hopefully by the time I'm done you'll get a better idea on how to do it and uh, basically how to uh, kit bash. <laughs> Just one more step in kit bashing. Okay, let me change the angle a little bit and uh, let's get started. I changed the angle a little bit so you can see the lines I put in here with the ruler. I'll just use one of these little rulers with that little square thing on there so I can set it on there kind of get it square. And that's where the tire is going to sit. When the tire goes down it's going to sit between those lines and drop in. You, there, I don't know if you can see these other lines on the side. This is the width of the outside of the axle and this should be the width of this axle approximately. I'm not going to try to get so close to wooden dowels but if I get that close I'm going to have to uh, cut these dowels off and move them a little bit further out on both sides just to get a better hold on uh, on the former. It's something I didn't really anticipate when I started doing this. I wanted, Like I said I wanted to show you how to do the installation of the pegs and everything according to the book so I might have to uh, do some creative uh, manipulation 
All right, let me get started here. Make sure everything is in the frame. And here we go. I'll start like this. Uh, get some more speed here. Alright, you can see she's, it's just starting to fit in the groove. The width is about right. I'm just going to keep going until it drops down flush. Okay, that should do it for the width of the tire. I'm down to the axle, so I need to uh, draw a line on the outside of the axle marks on both sides where it protrudes out the wheel. I can't quite show you that, but this part right here has to be notched out and right here. So all I'm gonna do is take my felt pen and draw around it a little bit on the wide side so it has room to just make it in there now the fun begins All right, let's drop her in to see how far she goes. Looks like the back of the tire has to be gone, gone out a little more. So I have to draw around it. Maybe a little wider on the tire too wouldn't hurt. I'm gonna go back about, oh, I'd say an eighth of an inch beyond the tire. A little bit more than a sixteenth on the edge of the tire just to give myself a bit more room I don't know if you can see that mark let me turn it well it's awful hard to show you but the marks on the outside of the hole there's the hole it's getting bigger let me get at it some more Almost down. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off for a second and uh, finish her up. Kind of get the drift now. And when that's seated all the way, I'll come back and uh, we'll move on.
Well, there it is. It's tucked in. Let me try to trip it. It's kind of a big tool to be using here. There it is. Extended. Retracted. Push it in. Locked and in. It sits fairly level. Not too bad. That's what it looks like. Massive gaping hole, but can't be helped. It's just the way it, just the nature of the beast. And the problem I'm going to have, just like I anticipated, this peg right here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me put a little outline around there. Maybe you can see it better if I outline the peg. It's, it's right next to the Oh, uh, let me zoom in one second. This is going to be a problem child right there. It's a little too close to the opening to my liking. This one's okay. This one will work fine. But what I'll have to do is move it over one width and oblong the hole so another the doll can fit through the through there into this section here. Uh, I'll have to drill into this uh, triangular stock, which is not a big deal. And then I'll fill this hole up with a piece of plywood or something. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. It'll look funny because the dowels are offset, but who cares? I mean, it's, it's just holding the wing on. So it's not anything cosmetic. It's not going to hurt the performance of the airplane at all. I'll just cut that dowel off, drill another hole through the former, drill another hole into the wing. Voila, done. There is another option where I could put screws through the wing if I wanted to, put, a, put wooden blocks in there, but that's a little bit more weight than I'd want to put in there after all the weight that I'm adding to it right now. But. Now let me trip this thing back up so you can get a frontal view. That's it. I think the tire is still hitting somewhere. Yeah, at the very bottom of the rotation, it's touching the back of the wheel well just a little bit. I mean, you can hear it scraping, but it's not enough to cause any major problems a servo could easily pop that out I'm still getting a little bit of rubbing but I think that'll go away once I get the the steering cable on there it'll it'll straighten everything out but I'm probably gonna go another yeah maybe sixteenth of an inch back here on down but that's about it well folks that's uh that's the installation of the gear as far as putting it in. Uh, it's not, we're not done with this video by far because I still got some rubbing to take care of. Um, let's see, we have to install the control rods, which is not gonna be no major deal. Um, let's see, what else? Moving. Uh, just the moving of the dowel I don't know if you need me to show you how to do that that's that's no big deal um let's see pop this wing off since we don't need the wing anymore I should be able to more accurately take this out um, open it up a little more with the wing off the plane so I'll do that off camera that's not a big deal but you got the gist of what has to be done, and that's the important part. And you can see everything still lines up. If I would have had these set out a little further in the first place, the wooden dowels, everything would be just perfect. The last time I did this, this former sprung out, but I got enough bracing in here this time to stop that. So that's been corrected. Except for this wooden dowel. That it's a little bit irritating to me. I'm kind of curious if there's a way I can cure it without... Well, I guess I could cure it by boxing it in 
um, adding some reinforcement but that might be more hassle than what it's worth it might be just better off I'll have to I'll have to think on it a little bit see and see what I can come up with that might be a little more helpful if I can get away with not moving it and reinforce this thing uh, then I might do that but that's that another problem we're gonna have let's see I'm gonna have is I don't know what I did with my block but the block has to sit on here yet so I have to carve out the inside of the block to fit the wheel and the retract um, then I have to cut the block itself to match this hole here which is only gonna be like a, a little like a tire half a tire or a quarter tire well now in this case maybe an eighth of the tire and then kind of a wide strip for the nose wheel um, strut uh, open it up for the spring and it looks like this is the steering arm is gonna have to be protruding out a little bit not a big deal have to be rounded out um, I might open it up so I can get to the screws just in case they come loose so it's gonna be a gaping hole in the front but that's not a big deal when it comes to retracts that's normal on a sport plane okay let me uh, rearrange things and uh, figure out what what I'm gonna do next and uh, go from there I finished going over this uh, several times and uh, what I decided to do is put two uh, eighth inch light ply braces up in here to support some golden rod it's just a flex cable with a like a nyrod inner and it's more pliable than nyrod because I thought about going with nyrod I thought about using like the red nyrod this is an old piece uh, I thought about using something like this but I don't get the flexibility and the problem with this is coming out level and getting below the wing saddle and that is the reason I went with the flex cable because I could do that and have well, let's see if I can bend this I still have fairly good movement so that's what I'm going with the connector comes with it in the package it's a uh, I don't know like golden clevis I think they call it or something like that and they have these little teeny tiny clips I'll give you a close-up of this stuff as we go and once that's in there I can bury it I don't have to worry about it this clip will be snapped on there it'll never come off unless uh, I get a pair of little hemostats to pop it loose but the golden rod let me show you the package it comes like this this is a Sullivan product let me hold it up right can you see that I hope you can uh, it gives you a little bit of directions on there uh, it says applications on there it gives you a little chart and it comes with uh, two clevises two uh, solder on pieces of threaded rod and the two clips that hold the clevises and at my local store I paid where is it oh it's on okay I paid just under nine bucks for this um, it's 36 inches long when you use it in little chunks like that it lasts you for a while uh, for this plane I've had some leftover from another model so I'm using that I should have enough cable left over I'm hoping maybe not but I'm hoping to do the the throttle the throttle has to wind in there and stuff and I like using that kind of rod for uh, throttle I also considered using straight uh, wire but that doesn't have the flexibility at all so that that was out of the question all right I'm gonna zoom in and show you what I've done already and uh, 
then we'll continue with uh, installing the steering cable. All right, I'm gonna show you the close up of what I did. You can see the eighth inch plywood brace here. Another eighth inch plywood brace over here. And there's one that you can't see that's right here. Let me see if I can pick this up and change the angle. There we go. And you can see that the hole is oblonged. That gives me the adjustment to raise and lower the nye rod the way I want, either up or down, to get that straight shot. And these other ones also are elongated. So when I find the exact center where I want it, I will uh, put five minute epoxy around it to hold it in the center where I'd, where I'd like it to be. I pre-made the rod or the cable, set it all up. I put this little guy, it's a threaded rod, open hole on one side. You slide your cable in there. Let me get the other end. Like that. What I did is I dipped the cable into some resin, tinned it with some solder, put this piece into a vise and held it in place, had two pieces of wood on it and clamped down on it, held it in a vise, heated it up with my soldering iron and melted some solder in here. Then I stuck the cable inside while, it was, while I was still heating it. And I, it had overflowed a little bit, so I wiped up the mess and let it cool. Ended up with that. Now, if you want me to show you how to do that, uh, just send me a message and I'll do a quick video on soldering this rod, okay? <laughs> I don't think it's much of a big deal. You can use a propane torch and just gently heat it and do the same thing. But a, a good soldering iron, uh, the one I use is 140 watt. Uh, it's, a, it's two position, it's either 100 or 140 watt. And that's plenty for doing something like this. All right, let's uh, continue on here. I'm gonna zoom out and let's see. I guess install the cable. Okay, I'm going to slide the cable inside the nye rod. I'm kind of doing it backwards, but I kind of like doing it this way because I can see the degree of bend that I'm going to have as I'm shoving it in. You can slide the nye rod through the back into the front, which is easier, and then slide your uh, your cable inside the, the outer casing. And there you go. And it drops right in, right next to uh, the arm where it's supposed to be. And you can see that it has to slide right on that uh, plastic flap with a slotted hole and take the hemostats and just kind of work it on there. These clevises can be hard to spread at times and they'll give you a little tough time getting it on there, but once they're on, it ain't coming off. There we go. I gotta get it to snap. Here we are. And there it is. And now I need to find the, the sweet, what I call the sweet spot. On, how, on where it's going to sit. You see it snapped on the arm there and the oblong hole. And it'll slide up and down, the clevis will ride up and down in that hole and also slide up and down on the post. And you can see that sliding up and down on, on the post. Uh, let me change the angle. There we go. And there's the post and how it slides. 
and once you find the nirod sweet spot then everything works out just about right just about there I think looks about right now you can see we'll hold this in place put this back up it's 90 degrees straight ahead let me look down yeah pretty close now watch what this wheel does since this is the arm is out of position watch what the wheel does okay well it actually went straight in I'm gonna move it out of try to move it out of position here and okay see that see the way that wheel turned that's the problem you're gonna have if you don't have it centered where you need it to be so I'll put it where I think it should go okay somewhere about in there and now when I trip it it should just fall straight down really close I'm not quite where I gotta be but I'm really close and what I'll do is I'll center this just before I glue it in place I'll find where it has to be so it just okay see when it goes up sometimes it's not right it still wants to turn so it has to be a little bit higher so I'll adjust it from the inside here and glue it so it's where I think it's supposed to be and then we'll we'll continue on but that's it that's how it steers it's not locked so it's wobbling just like that okay that has to be right about there and you can see the the amount of drop I have to have to the servo right here let me move it towards the center of the frame that is why I'm using this rod because it stays nice and nice and easy to move and you can position it glue it and it won't move and then when you are ready for your retract everything is right there all right let me glue that in and I'll be right back before we go any further I thought I should explain what I was talking about when I said uh, finding the sweet spot for the control rod uh, and the best way to do that I think is with a whiteboard you have to look at my rudimentary drawings but just to give you the idea of how to set these up I thought it was important to show you where the control rod should be and a little bit more on why so I'm going to zoom into the board and uh, explain it real quick I would have used another retrack but I don't have one <laughs> for a nose wheel so let me kind of explain what we have and let me find something to point with here here we go piece of eye rod is that gonna work yeah this right here is what the arm looks like on on the retract for the steering this piece here has a hole through the center going through here and it slides up onto this peg it's they're different of, of course they're not to scale um, and the clevis snaps into this oblong hole in the plastic when the retract is in the up position this is actually showing it flipped upside down as it was on the Cougar and the bench you have the arm that's right here and the rod and of course the casing and from the top view the arm is right here and the plastic arm is here and here is the side view drawing with the arm hanging in the middle position and of course the slide and stuff now when I talk about the sweet spot I'm talking about the geometry of the rod the rod has to come in level with this hole when it's in the retracted position 
So your clevis is going to just clear. Let me draw this real quick. Uh, your clevis is like this. All right. I'm not a very good sketch artist, so uh, bear with me. I want to erase the center here. That will probably help tremendously. Clevis is here. Rod it comes in fairly level with that arm like that. Okay, you kind of get the idea. So looking at the side, it's coming in even with the plastic arm that, that's hanging on there with the oblong hole. So when it's in this uh, position, when you use your rudder, it has to be half, kind of halfway up the hole and it has to clear the plastic going through so your your threaded rod can only go to the very back of the clevis. But when it's like this, when you move your rudder, this arm is gonna move forward and back. It needs to slide up here on the rod and it needs to have a little bit of give in this slot. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bind and you'll have problems with your rudder. Okay, that, that's the main reason here. And it also helps with the retraction. And I showed you how the wheel cocked off to the side. If this isn't exactly right, that wheel is going to cock off to the left or the right. So you need to have this perpendicular with, the, with this rod onto this uh, arm. Now from the top, it has to come in. Okay, this is your arm right here. This is the peg, and this is the flag piece. Your rod, your clevis is going to go right here. Okay, let's say that's the clevis. Kind of picture it in your mind because this isn't going to help you none. Okay. Your clevis has to sit kind of straight with that rod okay so it has to be straight horizontally and looking from the vertical it has to be straight with the vertical and when it's all said and done you'll find that when this is in a resting position your clevis is going to sit somewhere in here Okay, it kind of looks like a freaked out worm, but I can't help it. <laughs> but the clevis look is going to sit right about there. And that's what I call the sweet spot. And when that happens, everything works correctly. The wheel goes up and down vertically, nice and straight. And when it's retracted, your rudder will work perfectly as you move your rudder left and right. I don't think I can explain it any better than that, or show you any better than that since the retract is in the airplane. I guess that's all there is on that. Let's get into uh, figuring out how to... Uh, well, first I'll show you what I've got when I, since I finished it. And we'll get into uh, probably the, the retract servo itself and the installation of the rod for that. Back to the nose retract here. Uh, this retrack is pretty much done as far as the control goes. And let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh, right off the bat, I had my braces in here in the wrong place. So I had to rip them out and start over. Made new braces and aligned it with what, like I was talking about, into the sweet spot once it was all adjusted and I'll show you it functioning. What I did also is I hooked a long uh, solid rod inside from the retract uh, 
uh, push rod for the to make it go up and down so that's coming out the very tail end so let me work this for you if it's not if, oh okay here we go too much flex in the in the rod but there it is that's the side view it's going up and down perfectly straight let me go to the front slide it around for you get it in the center and I'll work this see now it's going up and down and it's not turning I'm trying to get it so <laughs> slide it over this way turn it that way there's up and there's down you see there's no twisting of the wheel cocking off to the side just straight up and down so that should explain the sweet spot pretty well uh, let me turn it so you can see the inside you can see the two braces that I replaced I filled uh, all the ex uh, the expanded hole with five minute epoxy just kind of gooped it in there so it holds the rod in position and it's glued to these uh, front two braces also and it comes down to the servo and you can see the servo and it's already hooked up uh, to cut these wires this might be kind of important because guys like to uh, use different things to cut these wires let me find a chunk and you're probably wondering what's the best way to cut these wires these cables some guys like to solder them and use a cutoff wheel on a dremel tool works great and if you don't want to solder them you don't have to you can get one of these this is a Z Bend player and it has holes in it for cutting off music wire I don't know if you can see the holes or not uh, but there are two of them one right here and one over here and you slide your wire into those holes Let's see get into the back one and see it coming through and I'm just gonna nip a little bit off like that and it just snaps that off gives you a nice clean cut but like I said the other way is to tin the cable uh, I don't recommend using um, side cutters or a pair of dykes it tend these tend to damage the cutting edge on a, on a pair of pliers or something so you may not want to do that I recommend uh, if you're going to solder use a cutoff wheel but in any case you have to use what you got for me it's these z bend players i got these i think i explained it before i got these when i was stationed on okinawa in the early 80s and uh they end up to be in a, a really good tool i believe there's other things you can use uh, some uh, crimping pliers for electronics might have holes for screws to cut screws off you just you know you screw them in and then you snap you know pop them in half or whatever those also will cut these but not quite as accurately unless they fit tightly into the hole all right let's move on oh before I do that I want to show you this working with the, the servo grab my transmitter what I'm going to be using is this old 9c it has a, a module in the back I I'm this is set up for FM right now just for testing and when I get it ready I'm going to swap it over to 2.4 I'll put 2.4 fast module into it so don't freak out when you see that I'm using 72 because I don't fly 72 megahertz anymore okay transmitter on battery plugged in 
Let me bring this thing up, slide it to the center. Okay. Lots of movement. Got a little bit of something going on here. I don't know what that is. I think a little flex in the rod. Yeah, I might have to put another brace halfway because it's flexing a little bit in the center. But let me bring it to the front. You can see that I do have plenty of plenty of movement. That is apparently as far as it'll go. I think I have this brace just a tad too close so it's not a big deal. Um, the rod is sticking out a little bit. I'm just gonna get in there and snap the rudder off of the exacto knife or the snap the cable outer housing off of the exacto knife it'll give me a little bit more room and because it, it's hitting right there i'd like to get a little bit more out of it but that's okay that'll work i can live with that just minor adjustments everybody has to do them as they go it's just one of those things Okay, battery is off, transmitter's off. Okay, onward. Well, I thought it over and uh, figured I would show you what I used to install the Retrax servo and rod and uh, how I braced it up. In reality, I've already finished it. Um, but I figured it would ease, be easier just to show you the stuff I used, how I did it, talk about it a little bit, because it's no different than doing the steering on on the nose wheel. Same techniques, um, basically the same tools, everything. So let me get started here. Pencil, always important, something to write with, marker, something to mark things with. We'll start off with the plywood and what I use the plywood for is to make those standoffs where the rod is braced. And uh, it's eighth inch plywood, light ply. And what I do is I take a chunk and I draw in there what I want. And what I use to draw that is a machinist ruler. All I do is lay it on there, draw around it, put a dot where I want my hole, and then I'll measure out on the side of the fuselage to where I want the rod to be. I'll mark a, a spot on here and uh, measure it out to what I want, cut it out and slide it in and glue it. That's not a big deal. I'm sure all of you know how to cut light ply. You can use a knife. You can use the jigsaw, which I like to do. Um, but when you're using a knife, you cut your angles straight, then you'll have to take a sand, a piece of sandpaper and sand it round, whatever you want to do. I never leave uh, square corners inside my plane because there's always a chance of catching your knuckle on that and it hurts. <laughs> so I round my corners off. <laughs> and uh, another thing I like using is this little steel ruler here um i can't remember when i bought this as a matter of fact i don't think i bought it i think it was my dad's it came from a place called detroit ball bearing company they sold these when you went to buy bearings for your trailer or whatever but this has metric on one side inches on the other if you can find something like that awesome to have it saves you from switching rulers all the time all right like I said, X-Acto knives, an eighth inch drill. The outer casing of the golden cable is an eighth of an inch. So you get an eighth inch drill, you drill your holes for your, your rod through your formers or whatever, and that's the size. I use a hand drill and I use my drill press. I use the drill press more actually, but 
for mounting the servos this is a great way to punch a pilot hole for your mounting screws and this is uh i'm not really sure what size that is i believe it's a 30 second drill this is a scratch all but i use it for starting pilot holes in wood so the the drill bit won't jump around and you set it in the hole and then you can punch it through real easy for bracing well let's go with the, the rails first my servo rails are made from pine this is just a chunk of pine uh, from a one by let me see I don't even know what it is it is a one no, it's not even one inch. This is three quarter by an inch and a half. But I cut all my servo rails from this. It, it's just cheaper than buying maple. Uh, I've never had a screw pull out. So what I do is I just rip it on my circular saw in two directions and take out a chunk like that. And this is really good for servos if you center the holes you got a little gap between your servo rail and the case of the servo you can use it either way i use them both directions one way vertically like this on the back side of the servo but where the wire is i lay it on its side and it goes and you can see it goes above the wire you don't have to mess with the wire but that's what i use uh the screws go in it pretty easily you can pre-drill it with a pilot like this but you don't have to if you want to use a little bit of force it'll probably grab and go in i've done it before i like using a pilot hole because when you do that you know the screw is going to go in straight and not be cocked off to the side but that's what i use but like i said basswood works maple works i do have some maple i've cut rails out of like for uh, the retract rails, I do the same thing. I buy a chunk of maple from Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot, whatever. And you get a nice stick of maple and do the same thing to it. You can make maple rails all day if you want. And you don't have to depend on the size that the hobby people sell. You can make your own custom sizes. And that's another nice thing about buying chunks of wood. Uh, to brace up your plywood your light ply braces i use half inch triangular stock i didn't have any so i ended up having to cut a half inch square stick this has been scrapped for a while so i just run it through my table saw cut it in half half inch triangular triangular stock I use it to brace these little plywood things up. Let's say you wanted to make it, oh, I don't know what I got here. That's about an inch. You only need to use an inch of that once you have it all cut out. But you use the half inch triangular stock, and it takes up a half inch of that up against your, your fuselage side. And it makes it very strong, and it's never gonna break off. And if you make a mistake, and have to crack it off you got a little work a little bit of work to do but that's what i use inside of there and i also use triangular stock i'll cut off about a half an inch of it and let's say i want to run the cable alongside of the wall i'll take a half inch of it cut it off and then on the inside right here i'll just use the eighth inch drill like a file and cut a nice little uh spot in the center here that the cable can run through and you glue that right to the side of your fuselage with some ca and that works really good to hold it in place servo screws i use these screws right here they're half inch long they have an allen head on it and it has a washer type shoulder molded right into it and I get these from a place called RTL Fasteners. You might have other places you want to get to, you know, get these from. But I get a lot of my screws from these guys. 
Uh, this is what they call a value pack quality hardware bag. It is, um, it says number two by 716 servo mounting screw. There's a hundred of them in here. Actually, mine had 102, which was kind of cool. <laughs> Got a couple for free. The product number, if you want to write this down, is number 582-100, 582-100. I've been using these for a while. There used to be a lot more in here, but I use them once and I usually end up throwing them away or something happens to them and I get misplaced, but that's that. Okay, let me clean all this off. I'll bring the fuselage back down. I'll show you what I did on the inside and I'll point things out and show you what I did and how it works. Be right back. Let's get to it. It's pretty simple. Let's start up front with the retract. The nose wheel retract and the mains for that matter, for that matter, are linear pull. Okay, it has to push and pull. The older servos back in the day when I first started to fly were all linear. You had two sides that were linear. They traveled opposite each other and you had this little adapter that screws onto the arm and everything was linear so this wouldn't have been a problem but I have to take a rotary and change it to a linear so it has to needless to say has to travel in a straight line from a from a point actually from two points from this point here to the edge of the plate have to be stable and straight that way the rod can travel in a straight line I could have it off center a little bit and use a ball joint type uh, clevis up here but I found that when you do that it pushes sideways a little bit on the retract, sh uh, the retract shaft and it causes a little bit of a bind so I like to keep it as linear as possible and we go back from there, you can see the eighth inch light ply support. They're very strong, that, that, that isn't gonna go anywhere. The half inch triangular uh, stock that braces the, the eighth inch. And we come back, it makes an S curve right here, which you can't do with pretty much anything else. And right there is another piece of triangular stock. I told you how I groove it out with a drill and glue it right to the side. That's what I did right there. Then coming back to the servo, you see it kind of runs at a funny angle. So let me show you how it works so you can understand why I have this angle here. Grab my transmitter and a battery pack. What do I do with the battery pack? Here it is. Plug that dude in. Yeah, set that on top. Now watch the motion of the servo. Oh, we can't watch it with all this stuff in the way. All right, here we go. Keeps a lot of the bind out being on that angle. I tried it at different angles. And uh, this one seems to be the smoothest working. So this is where I set it. And that's the reason for the odd looking angle when, when the retract is in the down position. But it's locked, it ain't going nowhere. When it's down, it's locked tight. And you can probably see, let me raise this up. No, I don't make much of a difference. Anyways, you can see that I marked right next to the rod here. There's a mark there. And a mark, let's see, a mark further up. That shows me the travel of the, of the retract shaft here. And that's how I figured out how, how long my travel was. And the arm... I chose this white arm. I tried different arms, and each one 
was a little different as far as the the moment goes this one travels exactly an inch and a sixteenth it's the white one that comes with the servo I tried the red let me grab these other ones here I tried the red heavy duty arm like that and there's a lot of a lot of holes there you can see that you can change the the amount of throw you get but each one was just a little bit off and when I got it to the closest one it wasn't enough to get a good lock on on the servo mechanism so I couldn't use that one the same went with this black one and the wheel that one just didn't have enough throw at all and I went and tried an aftermarket this is a Dubro aftermarket and it's not quite long enough it just didn't quite have the the amount of throw I needed so I went with the white one the white one looks like this it's just a simple straight arm and that comes with the servo that's why I chose that all right that's and you can see the rudder here let me turn that the rudder servo and another thing to show you is when it's in its up position you can see let me grab my pencil so I can point to it okay right here when I move the rudder when it's in the up position it slides on the rod and you can see the clevis also sliding inside the plastic a little bit if you watch real close let me slide this into the center of the frame now watch the clevis it's in a neutral position okay I'm back now you see the plastic is stopped but the arm keeps on moving and you need that pretty close to a precise spot on the retract arm to get a smooth movement like that that's why I went through the trouble of getting a straight line right here and showed you how to make it into the sweet spot and this is what the sweet spot will do for you right there and you can see that the retract doesn't wiggle unless I really crank it back and it and it just starts to pull on the clevis or the clevis starts to pull on the the plastic arm and then it'll wiggle the retract a little bit but other than that no big deal and now you can see how much throw I have and that's plenty for a front nose wheel the next thing we have to tackle is a chin block and I'm not going to do that on this video it's going to have to wait and uh, I'm over an hour on this one right now so but what I did want to do is comment on some of the comments or one of the comments is that it's been quite a while between the last video and this video and I'm going to explain why it's been progressively getting longer and longer between the videos one reason is that the club is eating up a lot of my time uh, being the president I have to spend more time doing other things and the second reason is I develop, developed a medical problem uh, having a little heart problem and it's been slowing me down and slowing me down and slowing me down and they finally kept getting it under control to a point where I can function so that's why these videos have been taking so long uh, other than that <laughs> everything's been great I'm going to start trying to get these out a little quicker I know I said that before but I didn't expect to have a ticker problem and uh, kind of slows you down so that is that uh, like I said the next time I come back and do a video it's gonna be the chin block I'm gonna carve it all to pieces even though I got this nice shape I gotta hack it up so it fits on the bottom and then it looks like uh, after the chin block I think I'm gonna start 
putting on some filler because we're getting to a point where the canopy can go on pretty soon. I'm going to paint underneath the canopy and do the, the cockpit a little bit. And I want to show you that. Uh, the cowling is kind of interesting the way I do it. Uh, I've been showing guys how I do it. And they seem to like it because they, they use it. So <laughs> I'm going to show you. So uh, until next time. I think I'm going to uh, clean my bench off again and make it so you can see a little better. So until the next video, have a good one.